Hey, Tenth the Graders. It is September 29th, Tuesday, week four. We really only have about two weeks and a day left. Got a couple of announcements, and then um, we'll get to it. You've got a work day finishing up two big projects. What is your spirit animal and why, though? That is your daily attendance question. All right, our agenda. We have two new vocabulary words. I don't recall if I gave you one from yesterday, so... We'll go over uh, two words uh, starting our new uh, vocabulary quiz ses section, which is going to be given on the last day of this trimester, October 14th. I went through and I finished up uh, reading and giving feedback to all of your thematic paragraphs you wrote last week. So please go into that assignment. There's a couple ways to access it. You can go into Gradebook and click on the 30-point assignment there and access your submission there. Or you can go back and find um, the folder in which where you, where you submitted it. Please uh, pause the video. Make sure you do go back and find that feedback. It's important. I give, uh, I'll give you in a little bit uh, some general feedback, uh, common writing errors that I saw, trends of uh, 10th grade writing. But please listen, I, I, I did video, or I'm sorry, I did audio recordings, and they're one minute to two minutes max. So I think you're gonna find that could save you up to probably five points, five to eight points, uh, which is the difference between, uh, for many of you, would have been the difference between a C and a B plus, or a B and an A minus. So listen to two minutes, go back and make some of these big shifts. Other than that, it's a work day to finish up your summative essay. Watch the, listen to the feedback first. Go make those changes for your essay, your formal essay, due tomorrow before you get into class. There's no time in class tomorrow to finish that. Uh, your advertisement is also due tomorrow. Uh, no time in class for that. Uh, I've had about four submissions for that advertisement, and they're great. Really good job with that. Just a reminder to mentally prepare for your summative uh, media lit quiz this Friday. All right. Here are your two words, because I don't think I did one yesterday. Exasperation. It uh, is a feeling, a feeling of intense irritation or in annoyance. You could also use it as a noun when you conjugate it by exasperated. Uh, I was exasperated by the, uh, the, the soccer team using up all of the field time. And frugal. It's an adjective. My frugal uncle uh, uh, never bought... Uh, uh, any car with air conditioning. All right. Here are your common writing tips or common writing errors that I found that will become tips. Book titles. I saw, I saw very few people uh, <clears throat> formatting the title of Fahrenheit 451 accurately. I saw it most frequently in quotation marks. That's how you would do a short story or the title of an article. But this is a title of a book, it is a novel, and so the titles of books are in italics. That's where you have the kind of the slanted uh, font style where the letters are all pushed off to the right, like you see here. Um, <clears throat> so make sure you're, you're formatting that accurately. I saw this quite a lot more than I wanted to for 10th grade honor students. Do not use personal pronouns in formal writing. You're, you have a persuasive essay here. Uh, I, um, don't use I, me, my, you. Refer to humanity if you have to refer to the audience or if you're referring to what someone might think of when they're reading, refer to them as readers. The reader might assume or my, the reader, this has an impact on the reader. Don't say my opinion, say the readers uh, react to. So think of different ways other than using personal pronouns. Be specific with your thematic statements. Uh, if this is pertaining to you, go back and listen to that feedback again, one to two minutes. It's in that turn it in assignment. Some of this, a couple, not a lot of you said this, but uh, if you did not have a very specific thematic statement, uh, if you were a little too vague, it really ruins the rest of your paragraphs or essay in this case. Use evidence that specifically supports your thematic statement. I saw people making great thematic statements and then you just weren't really finding evidence that kind of showcases the language of this great thematic statement you said. So you have to use relevant text evidence. Um, um, so be careful with that. And lastly, just watch your punctuation. Um, if you're using complex sentences, you have to use commas after your dependent clauses. 
or if you have um, uh, if you're inserting text evidence you need to watch where you put your periods no periods inside of the no periods inside of the quote it goes after the Bam, goes after the parenthetical citation, not inside. I'm gonna leave this uh, exclamation mark here because that's not a period, it's an exclamation mark. It is end punctuation, but it is part of the text, so there are exceptions. So just be careful of that. If this were merely a period in the text, I would delete that period and it would only go outside here. All right, those are your tips. Uh, finish up your work. Be awesome. Message me in Schoology. If you have any further questions, please, 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 Go back into Schoology and look at my feedback for your thematic statements. That is an expectation. I'm sorry, your feedback for your um, your thematic paragraphs. Uh, you're going to make improvements if you do that.